Welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. When you're ready to transform your sales for today's transforming market, we've got you covered with your host, the queen of cold calling and founder of Salesology, award-winning author, speaker, sales trainer, and coach, Wendy Weiss. Hi, welcome to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. And I'm your host, Wendy Weiss. I am the founder of Salesology and the Salesology Prospecting Method. I'm also known as the queen of cold calling. And uh, today we are fortunate enough to be speaking with Devin Roberts, who is the Member Success Coordinator at the Technology Association of Oregon. And he is responsible for engaging new and existing members in the events and the resources that TAO provides. Um, he also, and this is so interesting to me as a former dancer, he's also a freelance theater director, producer, actor, and designer. And um, beyond his uh, current work, he's worked in several industries, including selling specialty foods, marketing, private security, and a whole bunch more. And uh, through the arts, he has had the pleasure of working internationally. This is pretty darn impressive at the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh. He's worked nationally, uh, the Orchard Project, locally in Portland, um, with the Portland Center Stage Profile Theater, Fuse Theater Ensemble, and even as a volunteer member of the Drama Committee. Devin's work is driven by a passion for community and a desire to empower individuals and a love of innovation and growth. And I am so happy to welcome uh, my new friend, Devin Roberts. Hello, Devin. Hi, Wendy. Thank you so much for having me. This is um, honestly quite wonderful to be here and, and talking to you. Okay, cool. So what what is the Devin Roberts story? How did you become the member success coordinator for the Technology Association of Oregon? It sounds like a rather circuitous path. Yes, it was, you know, I've wanted to pursue the arts for a long time. So uh, anyone in the arts will relate to the experience of finding those survival jobs and kind of doing what it takes. And throughout college, I kind of just took whatever opportunities were there. Um, so it started with private security, which was not a great experience and moved into specialty cheese. And that was where I actually spent quite a few years um, because it was, it was wonderful. It was so fun and presentational. It allowed me to uh, engage with people and get to know them and, and do this wonderful sort of matchmaking between people and cheese um, that was just really delightful. From there, you know, once I graduated college, I started looking for bigger and better opportunities and have kind of, in a roundabout way, just gained, really sought out experience and, and specifically like unique opportunities that will help me grow in certain ways, not necessarily in industry. So I worked as a marketing coordinator for a few months. I um eventually managed a dental office <laughs> after working there for about three years. So a lot of strange experiences. And then really, I, you know, the pandemic help, um, helped reveal a lot about what I wanted. And I knew that I really wanted to work in nonprofit work. I knew that that was really where my heart felt most comfortable and where I could really explore my skills. And so I sought it out. For six months, I interviewed and interviewed and interviewed. And then um, this amazing opportunity kind of fell right in front of me and I leapt for it. It was, it, it has been everything that I wanted from a, from an opportunity. Wow. That's incredible. And so what exactly does the Technology Association of Oregon do? What is your mission? Our mission is to create uh, and foster an innovation economy in Oregon to create this uh, state-of-the-art community that shares best practices to uh, support new businesses and um, set the tone for not just culture, but, but equality, equity, 
and all of those important, crucial things in, in the tech sector. So we, we do that through a myriad of different programs, events, uh, opportunities, benefits, um, professional work with the state, legislators, all of that. It's, it's quite expansive. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, the reason that I was particularly interested in speaking with you is in our early conversations, you kept talking to me about engagement, about community engagement. And mm -hmm. um, as a sales professional, for sales professionals, being able to engage, whether it's with just one other human being or with a whole community of human beings, it, it's really, really important. So I'm curious to get your take on how do you do that? How do you build a community? The first step, um, and I'm going to say this maybe several times through this interview, is uh, relationships. At the end of the day, people form communities based on their relationships with the people around them. So we focus a lot at TAO on how to strengthen the relationships we have with individuals, with companies, whatever we can do to make them feel close to us, even in a virtual environment, is um, is how we, how we do that. Because then once you have a relationship with people, you show up for those people, you engage with those people, you connect and support them. And that's, that's the only way. Otherwise, a lot of times they just kind of disappear or they'll have a great conversation with you and then you'll never see them again. Um, but if you if you really strengthen that, put time and work into that, it, it blossoms. And I would say that's what every TAO employee does their entire work day is in some way build relationship with other people. Okay. And so um, I'm, I'm curious because um, it sounds like you started during the pandemic, during COVID. So there wasn't a before for you, uh, before right. COVID at TA, TAO. But it seems to me that before COVID, we were able to go and be in person, do a lot of networking. And there's a fundamental difference between connecting with someone face-to-face -face in a room and connecting with them online. So can you talk a little bit about how you've been able to bridge that, what to me seems like a, a really difficult, it's been a difficult leap for many, many of us. <laughs> yeah, um, I can kind of talk a little bit too about really how TAO pivoted because I've definitely looked through a lot of their events and um, you know, it's hard to go from a lot of in-person networking events, having all of this structure, having events that had years to build traction uh, in our community, and then going all virtual, having massive turnovers. And so we saw a lot of our connections just disappear. A lot of these relationships kind of fall out from underneath us, not not due to anyone's fault, but just it's the nature of how it works. And um, And so for the last like two years before I came on, it's just been a really hard pivot to create that engagement and with so many people um, fatiguing over camera and really because the, the output you have to do is so much more without getting any energy back uh, from another person on screen. It's really tough to get that and to manage that. So it's a lot of it is accessibility. That's really how I've tried to make myself present for people is by making myself available, having any and all conversations at any opportunity. Um, let's just hop on a quick call. Let's just jump in person together or not in person, but let's jump into a, a video chat together and talk through whatever we need to just real quick. Even It doesn't have to be huge, but focusing maybe more on um, consistency really with, with, connecting virtually. I am lucky that we have been able to go back in person for pretty much all of our events this year. And so that's been essential, but I still, I don't wait for that to start building those connections and get that really wonderful face-to-face -face, uh, opportunity to meet someone and get to know them. Instead, I, I just 
get on chats with them at every opportunity. Um, and I really try and listen, make meaningful conversation, really get to, to know them, ask personal questions, be curious about another person, because that, that just helps guide me down whatever path we need to. And again, it, it strengthens those great relationships because people are like, oh, you, you want to know about me. <laughs> like you, you actually care about the other side of the camera. Um, that, that shows through, you know, people can kind of tell when you phone it in literally and, and it, it never feels great at the end of those calls. So if, if you can truly just be in the moment, accepting whatever happens, happens and, and just try and, and reach through the camera <laughs> and get to know them it, it, little, little things like instead of looking maybe at the screen, actually looking at the camera. So the person feels like you can see them, like you're looking at them. That makes all the difference in the world. And it's terrifying. So many people, including myself at times, can be truly scared of the camera. But if you can, if you can just find that little green dot and stay with it, um, that goes a long way. It's, it's the eye contact of video chat nowadays, I feel like. And it also shows that you're not like writing emails while you're meeting, which I'm guilty of only on group calls. <laughs> but... Yeah. You don't, if you're really trying to build a relationship with the other person and, and be present in that meeting, you have to give yourself to it. And it's tempting to not because there's so many things around you that you can engage with, but stick with that person. So I'm wondering what other uh, acting tips you can pull out <laughs> of your background for engaging on video calls, because I know as a former dancer, and I do a lot of webinars now, and I do a lot of uh, Zoom calls, and it is, you have to, you have to somehow push through. And yeah. so you look at the camera, as opposed, I've been looking at you this whole time, but I'm going to start looking at the camera. <laughs> and what else, what other tips can you give people for really being able to push through that flatness. Yeah, the, I think, the screen. Um, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I, the first thing I would say is just make sure you have a good setup. Make sure you're ready for the call. Um, test your mics, test your camera. Is the space behind you what it wanted, what you want it to be? If not, do you need to blur your background? <laughs> and do you need to have that ready at the top of the call? Um, can you be seen clearly? I mean, these things seem basic, but ultimately that determines how well they're able to connect with you. You wouldn't go to an in-person meeting and be shrouded in a cloud <laughs> or completely um, silhouetted by, by a light behind you. That just wouldn't happen. You'd have that you'd be able to see the other person and, and truly read all of their body language. And we lose so much of that over video call that bad audio, bad video, uh, unfortunately, it just sabotages you before you can get anywhere. So the director and the designer in me is really encourages people to be ready for the call and have it look how you want to look, present how you want to present. Um, the, the next big one, and this is, um, is breathing. Taking a breath before you get started Again, video chats are kind of scary for people who don't want to talk or don't like talking or don't like being on camera. So the way you can adjust for that is to just take the five minutes, three minutes before your call to sit in the space, center yourself, do some deep breathing. There's some great tension release exercises I can always share by email, but um, really just letting go of that stress and that anxiety or the to-do list you have in the back of your head so that you can focus on what do I need to talk about? Who is this person? What do we need from each other? And how can I be present? And that kind of intentionality with your thought will go the distance. I mean, that will take you everywhere. And it's not just for in, in uh, virtual. You can do that in person. You can do that anytime you're public speaking. I mean, these are just great ways to recenter, 
clear yourself and get ready to perform because it's, it is a performance as I'm sure you know. <laughs> Absolutely. And I was, as you were talking, I was just thinking about the years when I used to do business development uh, for clients and uh, I would I would do all the preparation, everything that you just talked about. And then before I would pick up the phone to start calling prospects for my clients, I would sing a song really loud, like any upbeat song that I could think of that I wanted to sing that day. And I, I do not sing well. You don't want to hear me sing, but I would sing it loud. <laughs> that was my warm up, got my energy up and I was ready to engage where uh, maybe before I sang the song, I'd be like a little low energy, but that helped me bring it up. I love so. that. And, and it gives you such freedom too. I mean, I also am not a great singer. There's a reason why I spend most of my time in the director's chair <laughs> and, but, but having that sort of freedom of expression. I mean, when you sing, you really go, you use all your breath, it's such a physical thing to sing. And it's so happy and positive for so many of us. Again, even if you're not a good singer, it, it, it releases. It's just a beautiful way to be in your body. And I think that's important, even on virtual chats, be in your body. Absolutely. Yes. So we are going to take a very short pause here for a word from our sponsor. And our sponsor today is Salesology 3X Appointments. You know how frustrating and stressful it is when you leave every sales meeting Wondering if your sales team knows how to sell because they're not selling and all you ever hear from them are excuses. They blame your marketing. They say you need to do more social media and they say you need a new website. You know something's wrong, but you don't quite know what it is and you're even starting to wonder if it's you. You don't have a lot of options. You could just fire them all and start from scratch and that would be expensive. And you're really sick of waking up in the middle of the night wondering how to fix this. Well, imagine instead that you have an easy to use replicable system that ensures that your team can easily schedule qualified appointments. And imagine that your team is excited and motivated, no more excuses, and you feel good. Salesology 3X appointments can make that happen. If you're a business owner or a sales manager with an underperforming sales team, let's talk. Click on the link to my calendar in the show notes, schedule a time. And I look forward to meeting you. And we are back with Devin Roberts, Member Success Coordinator for the Technology Association of Oregon. Welcome back, Devin. Thank so, you. It's good to be back. So I'm curious, um, you've worked in a lot of different industries before you ended mm -hmm. up at TAO. And what do you think, working in all those different industries... Um, I mean, I, to me, I see that as an advantage, but I'm curious what you what you say. I um, strongly believe that every experience you have is an opportunity to get something new. So while there were times where it was difficult to kind of flow through different industries and to kind of feel like I wasn't belonging in any particular place, I feel, I do feel so much stronger for it. I feel like I have these unique perspectives um, and, and experiences that have made me so much stronger, so much more uh, sociable and, and well-spoken in professional environments. I would not have been able to do this job if I hadn't uh, been a benefits coordinator for a dental office and moved into management. I wouldn't have had the uh, savviness to have these hard conversations about money and really get to understand what people are struggling with and what their issues are. Private security just made me a stronger person dealing with some very strange, uh, uncomfortable things, but it also made me really good at conflict resolution. And it helped develop this ability to work with anyone and to really meet people where they are. Uh, which helped me with dentistry. I mean, they, it just, they all kind of flow into each other, but you have to kind of be open to getting that from those things. You can easily jade yourself and, and kind of try and block those things out. But if you really sit with yourself and go, wow, what did I get from that? How can I grow from this? 
where am I right now versus where do I want to be? And what does right now have to give me to get me there to where I want to be? Um, because once you do that, you kind of also let go of uh, a lot of frustration or, or whatever you might have in the moment because you're not quite where you want to be. I'm very used to that feeling. And uh, you kind of just have to recenter and be like, this is where I'm at. This is what I can get from this. If I'm really present in this moment, I will be able to arm myself with the skills I want and start identifying what do I need that I don't have. And then just start moving in that direction. Yes, I, I'm very grateful for my diverse and strange background. <laughs> so I want to jump on something you said about um, meeting people where they are and also mm. being in the moment. And I'm wondering if that's something that you learned in acting school in the theater, because I know for me, that's something I learned in ballet class. <laughs> Absolutely. I, um, I'm an overthinker and I will anxiety myself into a hole very easily. And theater was the kind of wrecking ball that gave me the skills that I needed that like five years of therapy couldn't, <laughs> which is like, just how do I physically, how do I use these exercises and these tools and all of that to ground myself and, and be in the moment. And with performance, you have to be, there's no other option. Um, you're either in the moment or you're stumbling over your lines and you're stumbling over yourself and it, it can get crazy. So absolutely. I mean, theater, theater is what gave me everything. I'll be honest. It has taught me probably the most and it continues to be just a wealth of lessons. So I'm wondering if you can share, because I know from the work that I do with, with clients, salespeople uh, project a lot. They worry a lot. What if this happens? What if that happens? Um, and so is there something concrete from your theater background that mm -hmm. you can share to help a sales professional be in the moment? rather than in their head. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is one, this is kind of my favorite thing. And what I love about it too, is my mom taught me a version of it first, years before I got into the theater. And then I experienced it as a theater exercise and it's a variation, uh, but I've used it everywhere. I use it daily. I use it when I'm sitting in the dentist chair and I need to calm down and I need to relax and be where I'm at. Um, I kind of alluded to it earlier. It's a tension release exercise. So you can, the way I love to do it is laying down, but you can do it sitting in a chair, ideally with armrests. And you sit there and you try and relax your body as much as you can, breathe deeply, try and get to that point where you're in different parts of your body. And then when you're ready, you tense everything up. You fully like tense your arms, tense your legs, tense your chest, your stomach, your core. And you do that for a few seconds and then you just release everything. And you do that on an exhale. And that you can do it as many times as you need to. Um, if you wanna go for the laying down version, you go from uh, head to toe. So you start in your face and then you release and then you go into your chest, you release, you do your arms, you release, you keep going all the way to your toes, and then you do your whole body at the same time. Uh, and that is guaranteed every time to bring me back to reality and also help me relax <laughs> throughout and realize where I'm holding unnecessary tension uh, because we all have mental and physical blocks. So few of us are aware of the, the physical blocks that are keeping us from being in the moment. So if you can tense and relax, that that goes a long way. Well, I'm going to uh, sit as we are done here. I'm going to lay down on the floor and try it. <laughs> and I will, I will keep you posted. Yes. Yeah. It's very good. I yeah. swear by it. And, uh, and uh, we can also post your description. If you'd be good enough to send it to me, we will post the description of the exercise with the show notes and then everyone that's listening in just go to the show notes and you can try this exercise too and let us know what happens 
Absolutely. Yeah. So um, I'm wondering if you have any like favorite tricks for building rapport, getting engagement quickly when you're, when you're speaking with someone. I don't like that word trick. I shouldn't, I shouldn't <laughs> have asked the question that way. How do you do this? If you want to build rapport quickly, let's, let's just, I don't like the word trick. If you've just <laughs> met someone or they're a new member and you want to welcome them, bring them on board, make sure that uh, they have what they need. How do you do that? I, I try and find something to joke about. Um, I like to have fun with people and I like to laugh and find joy and a joke, not a bad joke and not like a weird joke, um, but more of like an observation or an acknowledgement of something around you um, can really go a long way to pinpoint where someone is. Um, I did this a lot when I worked as benefits coordinator because I would oftentimes have to walk into a room with someone waiting for me to give them a treatment plan of thousands of dollars and dentistry. And I had to be fast and I had to, it wasn't so much about selling the dentistry, but it was about convincing them that this is important and really reminding them like, we need this. So I used humor to try and gauge where someone was. And it told me whether they were willing to go down that path, whether they wanted just the facts. It told me if they were anxious or whether they were comfortable. Um, it was, it is my main way to gauge where someone is. And it's also, it can be a great way to just instantly get on the same page with someone because, you know, if you, if you do nail that joke and if you can find the right humor for someone, um, then you're already on the same page. You can not even talk about what you need to for like 10 minutes, but they're already your best friend. And then they have trust in you. You know, then you've built this connection before you even got to what you need to really talk about, which is really how I like to be, because that makes that conversation so much easier. There's less, um, it doesn't feel, for lack of a better word, pitchy, where you feel the structure of your script, which is good to have a script as a, a salesperson or as someone who has to talk about certain points, you need to have that way of going about it that's that sort of rote um process and you want to keep refining it but uh it it makes that so much smoother and cleaner and much more personable if you can really pinpoint where someone is uh for me on the humor spectrum uh that may not work for everyone it certainly wouldn't work for my brother who is very bad at telling jokes <laughs> but um if you can find your way of making someone laugh or delighting them, you're, you've, you've got them. You've created a new friend pretty quickly. Yeah. And that's part of staying in the moment too, being, being mm -hmm. able to do that and gauge where they are. Cause ultimately it's not really about you. It's about them. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and I always encourage everyone to not try if something goes wrong, if there's a mistake, if there's a glitch, that is actually probably your best opportunity to create a relationship. Because if you brush that under the rug, it's very awkward. Everybody knows it, but no one's talking about it. Very strange. But if you go, wow, this, uh, I guess my computer is not doing so well today. <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, if you just acknowledge it and apologize or use it as a chance to connect with a person despite what your tools are doing or your environment is doing. Um, again, you've created a friend, you've created a shared experience that you can now hold together and reference and laugh about, hopefully, uh, depending upon what it is. But that's another thing is, is that immediately tells someone that you are truthful, you're honest, you're not trying to hide anything. There's just an openness there that people crave in relationships and again will be your best friend when trying to sell someone something uh because they trust you and ultimately it's about trust right absolutely that and i also hear you as you're describing this 
you're being your authentic self. Um, there's no uh, one of one of my pet peeves is when people talk about sales, they talk about it in terms of manip- sometimes some people talk about it in terms of manipulating people into something. But it's not about manipulation. It's about being authentic, meeting people where they are, being in the moment and then being able to engage. So I, I love that. Yeah, I um, I hate selling <laughs> to be honest I hate selling but I've gotten decent at it in the few sales kind of roles that I have um by being authentic that's the only way I've I found success in any of it yeah I think that this uh, stereotype as selling as manipulation does such a disservice because mm-hmm. it really selling really is about being authentic and engaging about some value yeah and um yeah so if people uh, want to continue this conversation with you devin where can they find you you can find me on linkedin um that's probably the best way to connect with me you can find my email on tao's website techoregon.org um you can email me i don't anyone can email me at any time devin.roberts at techoregon.com uh, sorry, techoregon.org. Um, so a- anywhere, uh, if you find me, please reach out. I would love to talk. Okay. Hey, and we will uh, post uh, the Tech Oregon website in the show notes, Devin's uh, LinkedIn profile in the show notes, Devin's exercise to release tension in the show notes, and also his email address for those of you that would like to be in touch with him directly. And um, Devin, before we we finish today, would you put your hand over your heart and promise me that you will come back because this has been a great conversation. (laughs) I solemnly swear by (laughs) Devin Roberts. I, Devin Roberts, solemnly swear to be back. (laughs) Okay, wonderful. Thank you. So um, thank you. And thank you all for listening in to Salesology, Conversations with Sales Leaders. I've been speaking with Devin Roberts, who is the uh, Member Success Coordinator for the Technology Association of Oregon. And uh, if you have found value in this podcast today, please think of one person that you know, one business owner or one sales professional that you think might also find some value in listening to today's conversation and share the link with them. And again, till till we meet again, uh, visualize yourself surrounded by cash, really large (laughs) bills. You've been listening to Salesology, conversations with sales leaders, the art of faster, easier, more profitable sales. Be sure to follow so that you don't miss a single episode. And while you're at it, please leave a rating and review and be sure to share it with your friends. Tune in every week for more exciting insights and wisdom on transforming sales. And until next time, visualize yourself surrounded by cash. Very large bills. Mm